Trent McDuffie is not only the next great Chiefs cornerback, but he's a really more of a safety net in case Legereus Steen is no longer in Kansas City. Now, when I say next grade, I mean in the steps, in the footsteps of a luxurious need, because I think we all believe that he is a great cornerback with everything he does on this team. And why Trent McDuffie is that next guy, we're going to get into today on the RGR Football Channel. My name is Daniel Harms, film analyst. And like I said, we're talking about the year in review that was for cornerback Trent McDuffie, first round draft pick for the Chiefs that picked 21 in 2022. Everything that he brings to the table can be seen on tape. He lost some of those games early in the season because of a hamstring injury. He came back, he was impactful, and he was moving all over the defense near the end of the season. Something we'll get to a little bit later. But let's start off with everything that he brings to the table from the start. He is going to be a little bit more physical in man, press man coverage. He does a lot of that for this team. If you look at the top of your screen here, this is Trent McDuffie against Evan Ingram of the Jacksonville Jaguars in an empty formation inside the 10-yard line. He's got to play man coverage, physical man coverage against a bigger tight end, and he does a great job here expressing himself, getting his hands on the tight end, and being able to play a little bit more physically with a guy who's, you know, who's going to want to maybe impose himself a little bit more on the smaller corner that is Trent McDuffie. Here he is doing it again against Zay Jones from the same team, you know, the Jacksonville Jaguars. They want to play a little bit more physically with their, their wide receivers last year. Marvin Jones and Zay Jones really brought that, but you're going to see here, even if this ball doesn't get tipped by George Carlotas, who we talked about last week, and if you guys missed that one, you can go back on the RGR channel and find my George Carlotas breakdown of the going, going into year two of him, the defensive end out of Purdue. But we see the physical nature. Boom. Right there. Press man coverage. He's square. He's steady. His feet are underneath him. He puts his hands inside Zay Jones there and gets all over that. Good Lord, get this out of here. Gets all inside of him and is able to break on that football. So if the ball's not tipped, he's probably coming away with the interception or a pass breakup at the worst in that situation. So he does a lot of things really well for the Chiefs. And we're going to we get to see him playing against T Higgins down here at the bottom of the screen and we get good leverage good coverage understanding and he plays with his hands through stays in that hip pocket and knows he's playing in zone coverage so we've seen now two aspects of him already in man and zone where he really does understand he has safety help over the top here so he doesn't have to do anything drastic T Higgins isn't the most explosive guy in terms of short area quickness and breaking off corners in that regard. So he's able to stay in that hip pocket right here. Get his hands on it through the route. Stay there to the corner all the way there. Not a big issue for Trent McDuffie. But we're going to talk a little bit more today about things that he does. The things that he needs to improve on. Where he's going to end up in this Kansas City Chiefs defense. And I charted six games for him from the Jaguars game all the way through to the Super Bowl. So we, I went, I stopped at the, the Bengals game. In the regular season, then I went to the postseason for the Bengals and then hit the uh, Eagles game as well. Uh, there was uh, the game in the regular season against the Jag, excuse me, against the uh, Bengals where he had a penalty. I think that was the only penalty that I had, saw called on him during my my uh, my game watch. But also he forced uh, a penalty on Jamar Chase in that game too. So he kind of got almost offsetting. He forced a, an offensive pass interference call and he had a defensive pass interference call on him if you you put much stock into pff grades among all rookie corners you know he was second with all corners among 50 percent of the snaps of, of 789 coverage snaps so all rookies that played around 400 and what you know, nearly 300 sorry excuse me 300 and uh 80 plus almost coverage snaps. He was second among all rookie corners with PFF grading and next to second to Sauce Gardner. So the things that he does well, I think, really do accentuate themselves in this defense, being able to play both man and zone. And we're going to talk a little bit more about his coverage ability, but we're going to start off before we get into some. I guess some more details about what he could be doing in the future in Kansas City. Let's talk about the things that he needs to improve upon in his tenure here. 
We get to see him right here in the slot. Kind of more like this pseudo linebacker role where we see Legereus need playing beforehand at, at times coming down here. Being almost like this overhang linebacker but in coverage. And the big thing, one of the bigger things that he really does need to work on are those tackling angles. He has shorter arms for a corner, so he does everything well here, and then the footing kind of takes out from under him as he's breaking down. That's another area where I think that it does it does need to get better. The footing for Trent McDuffie, it does come out in multiple places against quicker guys, the quicker short area, or corners, or excuse me, wide receivers that can break him off in, in his routes and things like that. So he's just trying to come downhill and make a tackle on Isaiah Spiller in space, and he just kind of loses his footing. I'd like to see him kind of wrap up and then be able to get through and get through all of that. I, like Once again, you guys, if you've been listening this week, I apologize. My nose is still going a little bit crazy, so I'm doing everything I can to, to power through here and, and be able to be understood by everybody. So, yeah, here he is right here on the left side of your screen. You're going to see him. He actually does a good job of again, getting his depth with that route out to his left. He does a good job with the pursuit angle right here, breaking down, and then he just, you know, slips and falls. Uh, so I'd love to see him get into a better uh, tackling position where maybe his, instead of the hips going down into his uh, kind of like upper body going backward, he just kind of gets under there, maybe finishes through on some of the slower uh, running backs and wide receivers uh, at that regard. So another place that I think that he's going to have to get better at to really improve, especially on the boundary, is going to be his ball tracking pairing with his speed, okay? We see this quite a bit um, in, in today's NFL, especially for deep shots down the field. It's just a go route. It's a pretty simple go route. He does a good job getting his hands on Marvin Jones, staying in phase with the receiver up until the receiver looks for the football. And then we see him slow down. That's more of a natural instinct at times. You see, even for us, we start to slow down when we're thinking a little bit too much. You know, he's trying to think, okay, the re receiver's looking for the ball. I got to get my head around and you start to do too much. And that's when you slow down. So again, there's that contact through the route stem. He's doing a good job. I'd like to see him use the sideline a little bit more. Maybe push uh, Marvin Jones a little bit more out right here. But all of this is good up until right now where he turns to find the football. Um, he doesn't exactly locate it quickly enough. So that's where he starts to slow down. And that's where you know the ball is actually put out here. He's going to put out a little bit further in front of, the, of McDuffie who ends up slowing down because he thinks that the football might be coming a little bit earlier than he anticipated and a little bit sooner on the field. So this ends up being a 33-yard pass play. But it's all about that ball tracking and sticking with your speed all the way through the route finding that ball a little bit quicker to be able to identify and maybe using your outside hand, that left hand right here as he's turned to keep hands on the on the receiver to also gauge your distance. How far are you from the receiver? Is he pulling away from you? Getting all that speed done is a, is, a, is going to be something he needs to improve upon. It was more than just this play. Like We're going to get into one right after this where it's the exact, oh, maybe not the exact same thing because he's going against a much uh, better caliber of wide receiver in the Super Bowl AJ Brown if you guys you know don't know him you're about to find out about him we all watched him so I assume you do know uh, but this is where that same kind of ball tracking skill needs to come in a little bit more again he's basically in a bracket coverage right here with Juan Thornhill right here so this is essentially what this is you have a, a deep corner route from AJ Brown who's going to take this all the way up and then just kind of break in the end zone there it almost looks like a go, but he's just going to take it, take it, take it, take it, almost like a fade into the end zone. But the big problem here comes because he gives up a touchdown. So why does he give up a touchdown? What happens here that makes Trent McDuffie give up a touchdown? So good position. Again, you are bracketing him. So he's got outside. McDuffie has outside leverage. He has help to the inside. So he stays on that outside shoulder. He doesn't have to stay with him the entire way he's more just kind of playing the receiver all right but here's where that ball tracking stuff comes into play because right here um aj brown's gonna actually kind of trick trent mcduffie right here with contact coming in on aj brown he's got eyes in the air so what does he do he slows down a little bit now that's not going to be all Trent McDuffie's fault. It's very good manipulation skills on AJ Brown, but he's looking for the football. And what this does is it slows McDuffie down in the process too. So he comes back around looking for the football. And instead, the ball's thrown out here in the end zone. And McDuffie doesn't know that because he couldn't find it right away. So 
that's just getting beat by a better guy sometimes, your better throw. And you can be in the right position and learn. Like he probably should have been looking for the football a little bit earlier. That's the big thing here is that he he takes a look over his right shoulder a little bit too late, and that's kind of what does it all for me. Is that right here? You you you're in bracket coverage. You can be a little bit more lax with when you're looking for the football as a deep throw here. He should already be trying to locate that ball. He's really more playing the receiver, like I like I mentioned. But at the same time, you have to be able to do both. Keep your eyes over your shoulder. Look over your shoulder. Fly, locate that football while, while trying to keep eyes and keep hands on A.J. Brown. So we get to see him right here once again. Here's that, that spot I'm talking about where he just kind of baits him into coming inside and A.J. Brown tracks it over his shoulder for the touchdown. So like to be a little bit more understood with what he's got to do to get better so those are two right now positions that he can really uh, get better immediately and start to, to to be more of a complete corner especially on the outside those those are things that i really like to look for uh, but we get a little bit more like i said those, those two plays were pretty pretty similar and then we get to see him against Jamar Chase here at the bottom of your screen. This is one of the better matchups for Trent McDuffie. I think that he played very well against Jamar Chase. It's set up for him to play in the slot, kind of in the soup, in the in the uh, AFC Championship game, which we're going to get to here in a little bit. But this is what I was talking about a little bit earlier, using that sideline. So we have Jamar Chase essentially running like a fade route to the outside, and Trent McDuffie does a good job staying in phase, staying patient, putting hands on... Uh, Jamar Chase running him to that sideline right there, okay? And the ball's out, and what he does is he makes this a tougher throw and catch for the quarterback and the receiver. That's all I want you to do. Again, this is it's all very good technically. Being patient, getting hands on Jamar Chase, and then running him down around that sideline, making it difficult for Joe Burrow, who's a very accurate downfield quarterback, to make this throw. That ball comes out now. There's pressure on his backside. So, excuse me. So there's the ball has to go somewhere. There's less than a yard or about a yard between Jamar Chase and the sideline here. So really, there's nowhere to throw that football. It ends up being essentially thrown away by Joe Burrow. So good job here from Trent McDuffie playing the sideline. I like to see him turn around a little bit earlier, which is something we've already kind of mentioned about him turn around a little bit earlier. And I think things will take care of itself in year two. But technically sound positioning from Trent McDuffie here to push Jamar Chase outside and really make this throw very difficult for both. And he nearly comes down with it anyway. Sometimes you're just going to have to deal with that fact of the matter. Trent McDuffie's involvement in the run game earlier in his his tenure in Kansas City wasn't always the best. Um, I think that he, you know, playing on the outside is a little bit harder to be always involved in the run game. And one thing, actually, before we get into all of this i want to show you guys something because this was an interesting area for me to to study so in his coverage snaps let's look here if i can actually move this there we go towards the end of the season so week 16 17 and 18 the majority of his snaps came out of the slot or near the box as we can see here what I alluded to towards the beginning, at the, at the beginning of this video, is that Trent McDuffie might end up being Legereus Sneed going forward. If they can't find a way to make a contract extension with Legereus Sneed, it looks at least by these numbers that Trent McDuffie might be a guy that they view in that same role. Now, if you look, like I said, the last three games of the season and then the two biggest games, the AFC Championship game and the Super Bowl, those were two teams specifically who had, you know, one, two, and three good receivers, one and two excellent receivers. So it did allow the Chiefs to, to let Legereus Sneed on the outside, which he had been wanting to do, taking on more number one receivers and more number one options. So at least in that regard, I'm thinking that they might be looking at Trent McDuffie in a, in a way to play him on the outside, and, you know, especially in base, and then to kick him back on the inside, like we saw with Legereus Sneed for a couple of years in Kansas City. It's just something to think about. I think it's uh, definitely not out of the question. And he does have some work to do from a slot perspective, which we'll go ahead and get to right about now. 
So like I said, his, his involvement in the run game was much better from the slot. We see him here again in that overhang position. But he's going to come down, do a good job of faking this to the outside, and then come underneath the block and help make a stick for a stop, okay? Now, stops. For those of you who don't know, a stop when you're playing in the run game is a tackle that puts the team behind the sticks. Trent McDuffie had 18 stops last year in the run game. 15 of those 18 stops came on games where he was playing the majority of his snaps out of the slot. So it goes to show you that he's got a pretty decent ability to come in here, play against the run when he's in the slot. And that's something that they, the Chiefs do value quite a bit, being able to come down hill when you're in the slot, closer to the line of scrimmage or in the box, to being able to actually contribute as a run defender. We're going to see a little bit more right here from Trent McDuffie, who's kind of in that slot position. It looks more like he's almost could be blitzing because he's not right up in line with that slot player on that, that right-hand side of the offense. But instead, what we're going to see is a little bit of a shift where he almost plays safety here. He comes out and he's playing too high, which another thing that the Chiefs like to do is they love to show those, those safeties, those corners up closer to the line of scrimmage and then rotate them back. And Trent McDuffie now has played outside slot and a little bit of safety in his time in Kansas City just in his first year so they see a versatile piece here from Trent McDuffie and instead of actually making you play in the passing game he's going to come downhill and get the bouncing running back here doing a good job to get another stop with Nick Bolton coming down as well so this is a good job here they actually force a fumble ball goes out of bounds so that you can do about that but a good pursuit play on defense here to uh, come downhill and get that bouncing running back for a two-yard gain. So another stop here from Trent McDuffie coming in the run game. So I really like the uh, physicality he played with, especially in the postseason. He made two or three or four big plays in the AFC Championship game and in the Super Bowl just in the run game alone. He was making stops and he was coming downhill making hits and delivering hits. So he elevated his, his run defense for the playoffs and i'd love to see him keep that trajectory up as he's continuing to improve himself in kansas city all right let's get into a little bit more of his slot play so you're going to see him at the top of your screen and this is an empty formation from the philadelphia eagles and this is a one play to try to score before halftime they're trying to get a touchdown before they kick a field goal this is a really great understanding play from trent mcduffie he sees everything happening here they're trying to open up this wall on the left hand side of the defense so they're going to run this receiver out and then they're just going to kind of just clear everything out underneath on this side to pull defenders trying to pull everyone to this side and then just have Kenneth Gannon will come and just leak out underneath over here and then hopefully catch a pass and go into the end zone into that funnel. Dead to see that funnel, but uh, that, that lane that they're trying to create here on the left-hand side. And this is a really nice understanding again from Trent McDuffie who's seeing, you know, okay, I, I see, I see you guys are coming over here. All right, I'm going to gain some, some traction here. I'm going to go back. And uh, my zone responsibility is someone presents himself in front of my face underneath here in this area. This is my, my, my ability to come downhill and do that. So you have a lot of different responsibilities as a slot zone defender, especially in zone period. You have to be able to read the offense as it's unfolding. They come out empty, so a lot of different things could happen. And they want to be able to catch the defense off guard so they want definitely want McDuffie moving here with both of these players but instead McDuffie understands you know I've got a guy coming over here with Willie Gay who's you know passing him off as well communicating so we see that arm out from Willie Gay that's another thing too you see the communication on point so McDuffie again sees it as he's coming down he knows the ball's going there comes through he finishes the play, tackles him in the open field. Really nice job coming downhill and forcing a field goal before the half for the Chiefs of the Super Bowl, which really did help the Chiefs win this game. If they go down this score, touchdown on that play, you know, completely changes the dynamic of, I think, the Super Bowl. So a really big play here, but it also shows you that he played well in zone and we saw some of the man coverage snaps from him too. So he has a lot of that ability to be able to play in zone, to play in man. And being able to do all of those things. So I'm pretty excited about what he can do, especially from a slot perspective. And that's where we get to see the improvements that still need to be made for Trent McDuffie. He's going to come over here, play against Tyler Boyd. 
And Tyler Boyd is one of the better slots in the NFL, so he's got his work cut out for him early in this game, playing a ton of slot snaps against the Bengals in the uh, AFC Championship game. And this is really where his route anticipation skills, I think, are, are the next thing that need to take that step forward. He's a very good man coverage player, but when it comes to those quicker guys here, you see him playing with that out inside leverage. So... Use that to your advantage a little bit. Lean into the receiver and try to feel. Use that that hip. Use that 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 inside hand on, or the, excuse me, your inside outside hand on that hip and just try to feel that receiver. You know you've got help over top. You know you're playing inside leverage. Look for the break. Look for the break. This is a third and long situation too. So this is a like a 12 yard out and just breaking on it. So I think that some of the route anticipation skills are still coming to fruition for Trent McDuffie, but he's got all of the tools, the necessary foot speed to be able to do that. It comes down to route anticipation and reading a route tree and seeing a, a receiver really look to break on those yard lines. We see the Chiefs do this all the time on third and longs and second and longs where they run them out to the sticks and then they break one way or the other. So I do think that just seeing that you're playing inside leverage, that this is a third and long, they want to get a break here, especially because the receiver knows that you're playing inside leverage and you have help over top. So he should be looking a little bit more for that, but you see the footing as well where he slips right on the break. So he needs to do a little bit better of, of staying in phase with the receiver in some of these breaking out routes inside inside outside breaking routes just to be able to, to stay with them a little bit so one more improvement area I think for Trent McDuffie all in all though I think he's been a very good addition to this this cornerback room like I said I do think that he's got the ability to step in for Legereus Sneed in that regard and again he's done a really good job in zone just understanding his responsibilities keeping those eyes on the quarterback when he can see you know those eyes when you can see the quarterback, I do think he, his ability, his uh, instincts really take a step upward. And this is one of those places where he's in a really great position, understands the where he needs to be, getting that depth proper as the receiver's coming around you. Look at his eyes. He's looking to see if he's going to come over here, if he's going to you know be going up, if he's trying to come back inside, but also using that peripheral vision to keep an eye on Jamar Chase where he could be going gets that proper depth gets hands on the ball would love to see him come away with one of those interceptions did not have one last year had multiple opportunities to do so though so I think we're going to see him take that next step and becoming maybe a little bit more of a ball hawk uh, next year with those instincts route anticipation and playing a little bit better in some man coverages when the ball's in the air so you see all those instincts on on tape coming through here and, and I'm very excited about the the possibility of Trent McDuffie in Kansas City in the second year a lot, a lot of these young receivers or should be these young corners coming in last year played very well when they had to but then we're going to see you know hopefully them all take steps forward the last play we're going to get to see here is him recovering in man coverage again you see uh, Zay Jones try and do a little stutter and go and McDuffie sees it he bites on it just a little bit but he comes back around he comes through it he makes a pass break up on the play that recovery speed is there for him he does have a tendency again to slow down like we saw we, we do see some receivers who not, aren't necessarily the fastest in the world like a Zay Jones here or Marvin Jones on the opposite side for the Jags can, can break away at times just because a little bit bigger a little bit more physical but but good job here noticing the stutter and go possibility. He stops there with Jose Jones, gets back on his horse, and then recovers, finds that football, dives, puts his, his hands in the way there, and comes down with a pass breakup. So, Trent McDuffie has all of the tools, the makings to really take a huge step next year in Kansas City. They've done a great job of developing these young corners. They are always churning out prospects at the corner position to be able to come in produce in their defense but I think Trent McDuffie is the one that you can really count on to be zone and man competent but also take that step to possibly be the number one corner in Kansas City so I'm looking forward to it I hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown of Trent McDuffie everything that he does that he's going to do in Kansas City in this defense and hopefully we see him not only take those steps, but come down with the ball a little bit more when you get your hands on it, man. We love to see that here. Love to see those turnovers taking a step forward. Make sure you hit that like, 
the bell and the sub for the channel we really do appreciate it. you guys are some of the best out there we love the support you consistently give us and i hope you guys have a, yourselves a fantastic rest of your week much like i expect trent mcduffie to have a fantastic 2023 we'll see you next time thanks for watching this video from the team at rgr football click these videos to see more and subscribe to rgr football